Hello, hello, and welcome to the Healthy Behemoth Podcast. My name is Callie. I'm your podcast host, and I'm so excited to have you here today. Wherever you are, if you're walking, driving, working, surfing, welcome, my gorgeous queen. All right, to kick things off, we always start things off with a little self-check-in. So this is your very first episode ever listening. The self-check-in is just a time to become present with yourself, to take a moment, just ask yourself, how am I doing? Check in with yourself because you deserve it. And a lot of people will journal out the self-check-in prompts. So feel free to grab your journal, a piece of paper, and journal along as we go. So to start things off, I want you to go ahead and just take a nice deep inhale through your nose. Fill up your lungs with all that goodness, all that love into your beautiful body. And then exhale, sighing out, letting go of anything that's been holding you back, any tension in your mind. Just let it go. Okay, to start, ask yourself, how am I doing on a scale of 1 to 10? 10 being I'm absolutely thriving, 1 being we're not doing too hot, but that's okay. Giving ourselves grace no matter what. And now I want you to ask yourself, why do I feel this way? Maybe something happened, maybe nothing happened. Just trying to pinpoint if there is a root cause. And now I want you to ask yourself, what is something that I can do to boost my mood one notch on that scale? It could be anything. It could be listening to the full podcast. It could be reading a book, hanging out with a friend. The world is your oyster. Okay, now I want you to ask yourself, Have I drank water in the past 30 minutes? You know the drill. If you have or not, grab a cup of water. I have my water and we're going to cheers on three, two, one. Cheers to hydrating our hot pots. All right. Feeling so good and hydrated. Now I'm going to ask yourself how I stood up in the past 60 minutes. Super important to make sure our body is moving throughout the day. So if you haven't, I challenge you to stand up, shake out the legs, shake out the arms, get the blood flowing, and then sit back down. Okay. Next question Have I complimented myself today? If you haven't, take some time, tell yourself something that you love about you, inside or out. Just hype yourself up like a best friend. It's really important to think about our inner dialogue throughout the day because truly it can make or break how we're feeling about ourselves and how good our day is going. Okay, final question is, I want you to think about something that you're struggling right now with in your life. It can be something with school, something with work, something with personal life, anything. Just think about it, big or small. And I want you to think about what is something that I can do to make this struggle a little bit smaller for myself. So maybe in school you're feeling anxious about your tests coming up or all your homework, whatever. What is something you can do to make that anxiety a little bit less intense? All right, just think about it. Take some time, jot it down, and let's get into our weekly update. Okay, you guys, I'm currently recording this episode in my bed. It is so comfy. I just got these pillows from Target. It was such a score. I found these like fluffy Sherpa pillows for $7.50 each. $7.50. Such a score. They're like a body pillow and they're so comfy and they have like a Sherpa blanket too and I feel like a little cozy just... I don't want to ever leave my bed. Sometimes I record, usually record from my office space, but today I was just feeling cozy and sleepy. (laughs) I got back from surfing. I was surfing earlier today. You guys, if you didn't know, I live in this little beach town in Florida. And yes, Florida does get waves. I didn't realize for five years of living in Florida that there were waves in Florida. But this town, we get really good waves. And there's, I don't know which hurricane it is. There's so many hurricanes, but... There's one that's been basically been going, it was going to hit Florida and I think it curved more north and we're getting really good waves from that hurricane and I went today and you guys, I was literally just standing in the water. Like I wasn't even on my board surfing or anything and I had this wave just knock me over and I I did a full-blown somersault, back somersault in the water from the wave. It was crazy. So anyways, I realized today the power of the water and... It was so fun. I caught some really awesome waves. I went surfing with John and he caught some great waves too. It was just so fun. But I feel like this is just something I 
want to like talk about is I was really scared to go surfing in earlier this year. Honestly, I was so scared to surf for the past just several years. And I feel like I really held myself back from doing it because I was so afraid of the water. I was, I love the ocean, but I was really intimidated by it. I was really scared of sharks. I was scared of jellyfish. I was scared of so many things. And I just let that fear control me. And I had friends who surf and they love surfing and they were like, come surf with us. And I was like, no, like I'm going to pass on that one. But you guys, truly, I set the goal in 2023 to go surfing, to learn how to surf, take a surf lesson. And I did it. And it has just been the biggest win because I feel like I've just really overcome that fear. And it's turned into a hobby that just makes me feel so happy and so at peace and just just connected to myself and it's also a really fun social activity as well we have a lot of friends who surf and that's been really cool so I also feel really close to God when I surf because I'm not gonna lie seeing a big wave coming in front of me it's very intimidating and I often will pray to God and he'll just put bible verses in my mind about do not be anxious about anything but by prayer and supplication let your request be known made known to God that's when I get a lot in my mind and it just gives me a lot of peace so anyways regardless if you want to surf or not, just, it just, I challenge you to stop letting fear control your life because think about all of the possibilities that you can just every, all the potential, all the things that you can do that you're scared of right now that you're holding yourself back from. It's like having a door in front of you that's closed and you're so scared to open it, but you don't know what's behind that door. So that's something, that's like a little metaphor that I want to use just with my surfing experience is I was so scared and it just has turned out to be such a beautiful, fun activity for me. So you got this. You are stronger than your fear, my gorgeous queen. Okay. Other updates. I have felt extremely burnt out for the past few weeks. It has been insane, you guys. (laughs) I did not start working until 4 p.m. today. I've just felt like it's just exhaustion mentally, physically, and just like a lack of passion. So I ask you guys every Monday what you're struggling with. And a lot of you guys said just feeling anxious, overwhelmed, burnout, lack of motivation, all those things, procrastination. And I just want you to know that you're not alone. I run a full-time business, my business, and I do this. This is my passion. I love it. And yet I still get burnt out sometimes. So just give yourself some grace. I think sometimes it's easy to get burnt out when our society is very fast paced, when it feels like we always have to be doing something. We always have to be doing the next big thing, making moves all the time. But in that fast paced culture, where is the time to rest and to sleep? So I challenge you to give yourself grace and take a break and give yourself the rest that you need to feel good and to feel rejuvenated. Okay, one more update I have. It's on a little bit less of a serious note. My birthday is on Thursday. So I'm turning 24 on the 14th of September and I'm really excited because I want to have just like a chill birthday. I want to do like a little potluck dinner at my house and have a game, game night with some of my friends. And so I'm super excited about that. But I was thinking about doing like an episode today where it's like 24 things I've learned in my 24 years of being alive, but or 23 things, whatever, but I may hold that off. I don't know. Let me know if you guys want an episode like that, but I was thinking more along the lines of like an episode on just like getting in routine, fall habits, fall goals, how to get out of a funk kind of energy is what I'm feeling. I feel like a lot of people I know are just kind of meh vibes right now. I know I've been very meh, burnt out in a funk, and I'm very excited to like get out of this state of mind because while it's really good <laughs> to let ourselves feel the feels, it's really important to not get stuck in that season. It's easy to get stuck when we're in a weird mood, easy to get stuck when we feel depressed or anxious or struggling with our mental health. But it's so important to make sure that we're taking steps to get ourselves out of that hole because that hole will only get deeper if we don't take action. From my own personal experience, that's what happened to me a couple years ago. So let's do a little, a little level up episode. You guys seem to love the level, the level up kind of episodes. And I want you guys to know that like I'm, I'm on this journey with you and I'm not a perfect human. I have seasons in my life where I feel like everything's amazing and I feel like I'm on top of the world. I'm a productive queen doing, the, making moves, doing the thing. But then I have seasons in my life where I feel like everything is just in shambles. I don't feel like myself and I just feel like I'm not doing the best job to take care of myself. So 
I mean, I'll just share a personal example because this is this is something I sometimes struggle with in adulthood. Adulthood. And that did not come out right. <laughs> is simply feeding myself nutritious food. Three meals a day. This is something I struggle with. Number one, breakfast, I feel like I'm good at. I feel like I'm so good at making my scrambled eggs or my yogurt bowls or cereal smoothie. Like there's so many good yummy options for breakfast, I feel like. But lunch... I feel like lunch, if I don't have something pre-made, lunch is just like a wild card. And sometimes it's hard to get a nutritious lunch in because I feel like I'm having a productive day if I am or I don't have any food and I need to go to the grocery store. But that takes another like 30 minutes to an hour of just travel time and shop time. So that's my issue with lunch. And then dinner, I feel like dinner just comes upon me so fast. And sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, what do I make for dinner? So I don't know if anyone else relates to this problem, but sometimes I just feel like getting, actually giving myself nutrients is something that I really want to level up on. Yesterday I had, oh my gosh, you guys, I don't like to label food as good and bad, but you know what? I'm going to call yesterday a very bad day of eating because it was. I felt my stomach was actually in shambles yesterday. It was in so much pain and it was literally from what I ate. I had leftover, you guys are going to laugh at me. I had Cheerios for breakfast, leftover Domino's pizza for lunch, followed by Bluebell cookies and cream ice cream. And then I felt horrible, horrible. Like my stomach felt like it was ripping apart. And then for dinner, I had, oh my gosh, I had ramen you guys, it was a bad, it was, it was rough. I felt so sick. And then this morning I still felt really sick. So that's just, that just goes to show that food, food is medicine or it can, it can do things to hurt your body. So, but once again, we don't judge ourselves just because yesterday wasn't the best day of eating does not mean that I'm a terrible, unhealthy person. This is what the whole podcast is about. You guys, it's all about balance. It's all about just meeting ourselves where we are and just not feeling guilty because we don't have to dwell on the past we can move forward okay that was my little story because I thought I thought that was a really funny day of eating it was just (laughs) it was just a little unfortunate for my lactose sensitive stomach but anyways moving on how to level up you guys there are so many things and tips about how to level up out there and I think my number one piece of advice is just don't get sucked into what everyone says is the best thing to do. Let's simplify it. I think it's easy to give ourselves 20 goals for a month and then to feel bad about not accomplishing those 20 goals. But I want you to just think about what is something in your life that gives you that fun fire? It just makes you feel like a kid. Think of something that's just like fun for you. We need more fun in our lives. For me, that is 1000% surfing. I feel like an actual mermaid and I feel like my little inner child is thriving. You guys, when I was a kid, I used to take swim lessons and I would only speak to my instructor in dolphin. And I think I was just born a sea creature. (laughs) But anyways, anyways, think about something that you really enjoy. And I challenge you and myself to add more of that into our lives. Let's give ourselves like two or three times a week with activity. I think that'd be really healthy. And it doesn't have to be like a five hour thing. I mean, maybe if your activity is like going on, I'm trying to think of something the last five hours. I I can't even think right now. If it's like a five hour road trip, if like that's your favorite activities, road trips, like maybe not every single, or maybe not two or three times a week. Like that's kind of excessive, but hear me out. If it's an activity that's within like an hour, two hour range, let's try to squeeze that in. I think also for me, I want to add more skating back into my life. I used to be a figure skater and I just feel so free when I skate and I don't have that. I don't have that feeling enough in my life. I feel free when I surf too, but it's kind of a different feeling. It's more of like an adrenaline (laughs) rush where skating is more of, I'm just skating around the ice, just feeling the cold air in my face. And I just feel so alive. The thing with healthy habits, activities, hobbies, all those things is they all give us different feelings, right? They all give us a different experience. 
And I think the best place to start, even before I know I just said, think about something that's fun for you. Let's even, let's go further back, more outwards. I want you to just think about what is something, a feeling that you want back in your life or you want in your life. If your life's been feeling a little meh lately, a little bit flat, what is some, like the feeling you'd want to add, this is an example, is like excitement, something to spice things up. Or if you've been feeling just disconnected from yourself, the feeling is reconnection, reconnections inwards. Or if you've been feeling just disconnected from God, I guess the feeling would be spiritual. So think about those little feelings. You can jot them down on paper. I think that's a great place to start. And then under each word, I want you to write down different activities that give you that feeling, different habits, hobbies. Can you write down people that give you those feelings too? Because our community plays a huge role in our happiness as well. That's super important. So I know I have different friends that really give me different things in my life. So I have friends that are more of the work friends, like content creator friends. I have friends who are more of my Christian community kind of friends. I have friends who I just have grown up with my whole life. So even with friendships, we do a whole episode on friendships, but friends all add different values to our lives too. So write those things down. And then I want to just spit out some healthy habits I've been loving and that I want to add into my life. Because once again, like my life has been just a little, a little wonky lately. I feel like I haven't really had the habits, the habit routines that I usually do. I was traveling for a little bit and I think sometimes travel can really, really throw me off. And I feel like I was just chatting with my friend on FaceTime before this and we were talking about how um, <laughs> it was actually Lily Raquel. We did an episode together a couple weeks ago at this conference, but we were just chatting about how it took us like a solid 10 plus days to recover from traveling to the conference and just all the information overload we got. It was great stuff, but even still, like it took us a while to recover. And I think that's also not always talked about a lot in our society is like, we truly need time to rest. God made a Sabbath for a reason. And I guess that's my first habit. Like this is this has been something that really has leveled up my life in the past year. And before, I don't know when I added this to my life, but before I would work like seven days a week, you guys, I would never stop working. It was a constant hustle and it led to extreme burnout, like extreme burnout. I felt convicted about it. Conviction is when God places something on your heart, something that is not, is pulling you farther and farther away from him. So I I felt this conviction about taking a Sabbath because in the Bible, it talks about how on the seventh day of creation, God took a rest day. He took a Sabbath and we need to do the same thing. We need to take, take breaks. So every Sunday I don't work. I don't post on social media. I barely touch my phone. I try to just be present, rest, hang out with God, go to church, all the things. And it has really amplified my life so so much regardless if you're a Christian or not it's so great to take at least one day off from just posting always be on your phone always being plugged in like it is so healthy for our minds to just take a day off that's a habit I've been loving you guys you guys the other day I looked at the clock while I was eating lunch and it was already 3 p.m like what is that even lunch like do we think that's dinner or lunch like seriously with the busy fall season already in swing sometimes getting lunch during a busy fall work day can feel like such a large task we don't want to have dinners. we want to have lunch that's why i love factor america's number one ready to eat meal kit that helps you fuel up fast with chef prepared dietitian approved ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door if you're too busy running around during the day to think about lunch factor offers lunch to go effortless wholesome meals like green bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go and no microwave is required. I love how Factor gives you a large variety of options to pick from to help you meet your needs with their 34 plus weekly flavor packed fresh never frozen meals ready to eat in just two minutes. I think we can all spare two minutes. 
One of my go-tos is the vegan mushroom marsala. The onion risotto is literally mouthwateringly delicious and they pair it with the perfect roasted garlic green beans. When I first tried Factor, I genuinely had no clue how it was still going to taste good microwaved, but it, you guys, it is so fire. I'm not just saying that. Like, it's so good. This September, head to factormeals.com slash calipod50 and use code calipod50 to get 50% off. That's code calipod50 at factormeals.com slash calipod50 to get 50% off. And you spell Cali, C-A-L-L-I-E-P-O-D 50. Definitely go try Factor. As you know, I'm a huge advocate for living a balanced life while still giving my body the fuel it needs to feel its best. One of my favorite mindset switches that has helped me so much in my health and wellness journey with being less restrictive but still mindful is called the crowding out method. Instead of telling myself that I have to quote unquote cut out white bread or else and place that guilt trip on myself, I love finding a healthier bread alternative or whatever the case is and eat that instead. As a result, the healthier alternative actually pushes the option out of the way that isn't as fueling and won't leave me feeling as good on the inside. So a recent crowding out alternative that I have found and I am loving is Hero Bread. I am a absolute huge bread lover. I actually joke that I have two stomachs, one for bread and one for everything else. So Hero Bread is truly helping me continue to love what I eat while still giving my body the fuel it needs to thrive and survive. Hero Bread has zero to one grams of net carbs, zero grams of sugar. It's high in fiber and contains fewer calories and more protein per serving than the usual conventional version of the same baked goods. Hero Bread products are delicious and flavorful, offering the soft, fluffy experience that you love when enjoying a refreshing beer. LT, savoring a breakfast burrito or mouthwatering cheeseburger. I've been on such a breakfast burrito kick lately, and I am super pumped to make my burrito tomorrow morning using one of Hero Bread's flour tortillas. No joke, you guys, the taste is so delicious. It has such a soft, fluffy texture, and it is a way more nutritious option with its prebiotic fiber and protein. You definitely should give Hero Bread a try for yourself if you're also a huge bread lover like me, but want to still be healthy and take care of your body and give it what it needs to feel its best. So for 10 percent off your first order on hero.co use code human 10 at checkout that's human 10 at h-e-r-o dot c-o definitely you'll give it a try and let me know what you think it's 12 30 on a friday night you decided to stay in and have a much needed cozy self-care night packed with some reality tv a face mask and of course your favorite ice cream. As you slip your fluffy slippers on and trudge to your fridge to grab Ben and Jerry's half-baked, you open the lid to find that your roommate has yet again left you with less than a spoonful. You have a life or death decision to make in this moment. You can A, put on pants and drive to the grocery store with the possibility of seeing your ex, or B, try out that new thing that everyone has been talking about called GoPuff. Thankfully, you go with B and save your Friday night using your forever favorite delivery app that offers super fast delivery for anything you need. Their simple to use app lets you order your favorite brands like Ben and Jerry's and products right to your door in 30 minutes or less. No middlemen, no crazy fees, no waiting around, and most importantly, no roommates that steal your ice cream. GoPuff has literally everything you could ever want, like your favorite study snacks, drinks, groceries, alcohol, home essentials, and more, delivered with the click of a button. For a limited time only, GoPuff is giving new customers $10 off their first 10 orders, plus a 14-day free trial of their exclusive membership program using code WELCOME1010. GoPuff's membership program gives you access to unlimited free deliveries and no service fees, extremely low pricing on over 150 everyday essentials like eggs, milk, Ben and Jerry's, and more, and insane weekly deals on the most coveted and in-demand brands and products. Download the GoPuff app or visit gopuff.com and use code WELCOME1010 today. Another habit I've been loving is working outside when I can. Obviously, I'm not outside right now because I don't want there to be a bajillion background noises outside. But 
I have a hammock and I had left this hammock untouched for probably six months. I hadn't even sat in it. And you guys, this is so embarrassing. (laughs) But the reason why I hadn't gone in my hammock is because we get these really gross like centipede things. I don't know what they are, but there's a ton of them in Florida. And the last time I was in my hammock, I had a bit of a traumatic experience. (laughs) I was laying in the hammock just in thriving, enjoying my life when all of a sudden I felt, oh my gosh, I feel disgusting even saying this out loud. I felt a centipede crunch underneath my foot and realized there was one of the centipedes in the hammock with me and I freaked out. I I just freaked out. So anyways, I didn't touch the hammock for six months and I know that's kind of dramatic. Saying this out loud is making me feel very dramatic, but it's okay. I got over my fear this past week. I dumped the centipede out of the hammock. It was still there from the past six months and I made sure there were no other centipedes in the hammock and then I got back in and I put a little pillow behind my head and I typed on my laptop and I was like, why don't I do this every day? This is so much better than staying in my office and just working and getting like no fresh air. So that's another tip if you can. Take your take your computer outdoors. And I know a lot of you guys are in school or you work in an office, so sometimes it's not possible. But even if you're working in an office or, at, or you're at school, just try to step outside for like an hour a day. If you can go outside for lunch, that's always really fun. I remember I worked at one of my internships. I was working in an office and I would go and take my lunch and sit by the water every day and it was just such a great way to just decompress from the morning and prepare myself mentally for the afternoon (laughs) grind (laughs) but anyways that is another little tip I have that's been really helpful and then the third tip I have that I've been loving lately is reading before bed I know this is like the most basic tip ever hear me out you guys reading fiction fiction is so good before bed like I have a ton of nonfiction books. I love books and I'm the type of person that I have probably five to 10 books going at once. A lot of books I haven't touched in months, but I've started to read, you know, (laughs) let me know if you're like that. But I find if I read like a nonfiction book before bed, I just don't soak it in as well because I feel so sleepy. But reading a fiction book has been such a game changer for me and I've been loving it. I also noticed that when I don't have a fiction book, I don't read as much. And so just getting my brain in reading mode has been awesome, especially before bed. A little wind down. I don't feel tempted to go on my phone. I feel like I just can kind of like escape into a little a little book world. And it's been really fun. I'm actually reading, it's not fiction, but it's Simone Biles' biography. And I love reading athletes' biographies. I find them so motivational. I love gymnastics. If you didn't know that about me, I love gymnastics and figure skating. Those are my two favorite sports. So as a kid, I'd always read figure skating books. Figure skating biographies were my, like, they were my jam. I loved them. They really, really motivated me. And so I've been trying to find some motivation in my life again. And I would say reading a biography from a motivational person you look up to, mm, so helpful. Literally so helpful. Okay, what was that? Tip number three. Okay, tip number four, just stop hiding in your shell. Stop isolating yourself. This is a tip I'm kind of preaching to myself right now. So often I get stuck in my comfort zone. I want to just get cozy in my bed and not put myself out there and be social and go do things that make me uncomfortable, like having in-person events or meeting new people. Like sometimes I just want to just be by myself and I resist doing things that get me out of my shell. And in New York, I really did that. And it just, I started to isolate myself a lot from my community and from other people. And I just became so unhappy. And so this is something that I truly challenge you and me to do at least once a week meet a new person, make a new friend. I have been volunteering at Young Life. If you don't know what that is, it's this Christian outreach program for high schoolers, middle schoolers. It's so fun, you guys. I I went to Young Life camp this past summer as a leader. 
and that was mega out of my comfort zone. It was, I really never loved camp growing up, but it was so fun. And even like, okay, we had our first, it's called club every week. Basically what it is, is all these high schoolers will go into this room. We have like a big space and it's like a big space, like one single room. And it'll just be this super fun night of just singing, fun skits, fun games. And then the end of just all the stuff, they'll have worship music and then someone will speak about Jesus and it's just so fun. Like that was my first club ever in this county where I live. And it is just, it was so fun. But I will say it really pushed me out of my comfort zone because even though I'm out of college, I'm 20, almost 24 now, I still get nervous meeting new people sometimes. And I'm more of a small group kind of person. I thrive in like groups of three. That's my favorite number. Groups of three or four, I would say. So to be in a large group of high schoolers yesterday, like 100 plus people, was definitely not my comfort zone. And the head leader challenged us to meet at least two new people. And so I went up to just some random girls who I'd never seen or met. And I was like, hi, I'm Callie. (laughs) And I look like I'm low-key, like 15 years old. I have a baby face still. So most people, when I was volunteering at the summer camp, thought I was fully a student in high school still. And I was like, you know, I'm married. I... I'm not in high school, but <laughs> thanks, I guess. <laughs> so it was, it's kind of awkward because I feel like, I don't know. I felt like I was just, I look like a high schooler and I was just going up to random people saying hi. But, you know, even when I was doing that, as awkward as some of the conversations felt at first, I just kept asking questions. I didn't let the awkwardness control me. I didn't let my fear control me. And I was like, it was kind of an out-of-body thing because I was just, you know, the fake it till you, till you make it thing. I was like, I'm a leader. I can be confident. I got this. So that is just a long-winded answer of an example of how you can push yourself out of your comfort zone. But truly, I just, I challenge you to make a new friend, make meet a new person, talk to the barista at your favorite coffee shop for more than just, how's your day? Good. Maybe ask them about their necklace or ask them like, hey, I love your outfit. Like, where'd you get it? Just starting to build relationships with people who aren't already in your inner circle, that's just a really great way to get out of the weird like isolation or comfort zone that sometimes can come with the fall and winter seasons. Because I know summer a lot of time, it's very like, let's, let's party, let's go out and have fun and be super social. It's warm, it's fun. And then as the cozy vibes come, it's very, very tempting to just want to stay in all the time. So let's hold ourselves accountable to continuing to put ourselves out there for new experiences and new friends. All right, moving on to my next tip. Don't stop staying organized, my friends. It will bite you in the butt. For me, it bit me in the butt recently. Basically, John and I, I've talked about this on the podcast. We have this sheet, an Excel sheet with all of our, it's called Biz Goals 2023 has all of our just day-to-day goals of things that we're going to accomplish. And we used to have morning meetings every day where we talk about things happening, things going on. And we kind of fell out of the groove of that. We stopped having the meetings. We stopped using the sheet. And it literally felt like, it felt like every day I was just floating. I didn't really have a purpose. I was just doing what came to my head and it got overwhelming a lot and I didn't feel like we had a vision anymore for the business. I know not all of you guys listening are business owners. In fact, most of you guys probably aren't. I know a lot of you are in college. You just graduated college. Maybe you're working nine to five, whatever. Whatever stage of life you're in, if you're listening, you're like 50 years old. Also, that's amazing. This goes out to any age range. I think it's important that we write things down and that we continue to set tangible goals not just our minds. Writing stuff down has a lot of power. And for for starters, you don't forget as many things. If I don't write down a meeting or a hangout with a friend, I will fully forget it. And it's just because we're so overstimulated every day. So it's important to write things down and it's important to write down, this is what I'm doing today. And then it feels so satisfying to just check it off. If you've been feeling overwhelmed with school or work and you just feel like there's a bajillion things churning in your mind, do a brain dump. Brain dumps are one of my favorite things to do. You grab a piece of paper, write down everything just in your mind. Just keep writing until nothing comes up. Dump it all down and then you can organize the dump list, 
can write down what's high priority, what's not high priority. And it's just so good for overwhelm. But yeah, I think organization is key. I mean, a clean, like, our space, especially, if it's not organized, it can give us more mental clutter. That's the thing. And I definitely have had a very unorganized space lately. I, in fact, I mean, you can't really see this, but <laughs> I have so many random objects on the floor on my left. I have some some snacks. I have a claw clip with a hair tie. I have a finger brace. I have some tea, a scrunchie. I have some cords, a heating pad. (laughs) There's so many things on the floor. I need to clean it up because seriously, there is a correlation to our space and how well we can think. Okay, next tip. Speaking of spaces, I feel like fall is all about cozy. When I think of fall, I think of cozy and I also think of productivity. And I think of colorful leaves (laughs) and pumpkin, lots of different things. Make your space a place where you feel comfortable and cozy this fall. Maybe get some candles that smell like pumpkins or whatever scents you like. It makes you feel homey and like you can just stay there for a while. A lot of the times I will just leave my space a mess or I won't take time to just add little details into my life that I know make myself really happy. Candles is one thing. The other day I was sitting on the chair and I was just like, you know, it'd be so nice to have a candle lit right now, but I don't really want to get up. And then I was like, ew, Callie, you're being a little lazy. Like, you love candles. Just do it for yourself. And so I did. And it made the room smell amazing and it made the vibes so much better. So make your space a place you like to be. That's super important and a great way to go into fall because I feel like fall is also all about organization too. So let's get our spaces cleaned up and cozy. Clean and cozy. Those are the words, you guys. I'm trying to think of anything else. I think something else I've been loving lately. This is just more of like, there's like two more things or a couple more things, actually. I won't, I won't explain them quite as much as I have for the previous things. The first thing is how we speak to ourselves and how we speak to our body specifically. As women, our body is always changing, you guys. One day, we feel like we wake up and we have the morning skinny and we feel super good. The next day we wake up and we're really bloated and we have a pimple on our nose and you're like, ew, like what happened there? (laughs) And then the next day you wake up and you have a yeast infection and you feel horrible. And the next day you wake up and you feel great again. As a woman, our bodies just change so much, so drastically. We have four, four different phases, in fact. We are four different people throughout our cycle. Our, our hormones are changing a lot. So a habit that I really like and I've been trying to implement better is looking at myself in the mirror and instead of picking out all the things I hate about myself, picking out the things I love about myself and the places where I'm not as happy, like my acne or if I'm bloated, putting my hands on that part of my body and just being like, I love me. And my body is doing the best it can. It The best it can. Our self-talk is so important no matter where you are in your journey. If it's your day one, day 100, I don't care. It's still really important to love yourself through the whole process because we're going to be evolving and changing the rest of our lives. And it would kind of suck if we were mean to ourselves for, let's say we lived 80 years. Can you imagine being mean to yourself for 80 years? That's just, that makes me really sad to think about. So do your best to love on your body. She's doing the best she can and you should be really proud of her. Okay, next thing, next thing. I've been obsessed with having a morning quiet time. This isn't new. You guys already know this. I love a morning quiet time. I actually have the devotional that I'm obsessed with. It's right here. Live on Purpose by Sadie Robertson. This is my third time reading through it. It's just so good, you guys. I feel like every time I read it, just the spirit speaks to me and it's just so cool. Like, okay, this is so wild. Yesterday's devotional was the verse that it talked about was Jeremiah 29 11. It's for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Okay, this is so crazy, you guys. Before I read this devotional yesterday, 
I had that verse running through my head and then I opened the devotional and this was the verse that was the daily devotional verse. I just, it's not random and this is not the first time that's happened to me with this devotional, which is so cool. And so obviously it's not the devotional that has the power, it's God and he speaks to us through different ways. But I really have loved in my morning quiet time lately, just trying to create a space where I feel the most connected to him to really encounter God. Some days it looks like worship music. I'm singing along. Other days it looks like I'm sitting and I'm outside. I'm just appreciating the nature. I'm thanking him for a lot of things, feeling gratitude. And then other days it's me swimming in the ocean, just chatting like a best friend to him. So that's been something that's been really cool is just kind of experiencing his presence in different environments and seeing how I feel the closest to him in different places. So that's been really cool. And if you are wondering how to get closer to God, I actually did a whole episode on this. I think it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I think it was two weeks ago. So definitely go check that out. I give a lot of tips that I have used over the past two years now, getting back into my faith and they've been really helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know. I was also thinking, you guys, I really want to make a podcast group chat. I have a group chat for my my Pilates studio and I know some of you guys have joined it, but I really want to make a podcast specific chat and maybe do a Bible study every week, like a virtual Bible study. We could go through different studies, different books of the Bible. We could read different books. I just, I know a lot of you guys are getting back into your faith, which is so exciting and you feel kind of alone in it. You feel like no one around you is doing it and you want that community. You're craving that community. Like I know I was there when I was getting back into my faith. I just wanted people around me who were also in the same boat. And so I was thinking that could be really fun to do. And let me know if you're interested in that because I would love to get that started for you guys. So DM me on Instagram at Healthy But Human Pod if you are. Let me know and we'll get that started. And uh, last tip, I, oh my gosh, you guys, I just had a tip and then I just oh, completely forgot it. I don't know. <laughs> you guys, maybe this tip will come to me and I'll tell you in the next episode. But I feel like I had one more thing that I've been loving and I just completely, just completely slipped my mind, but it's okay. So anyways, I have another quick little update for you guys. It's super exciting is I, I know I have talked about this for the past like half a year about merch and you're like, where is it? Guys, it is, it's getting there. (laughs) I was about to say it's almost done, but it's getting there. It's getting there. I worked on it. I'm going to work on it tonight and then Hopefully the design will be done and then I'm just finalizing the colors and stuff and then we're going to get the actual products that the merch design will be on. If there's any specific things you guys want, let me know. So far, I'm going to do like, I'm between a hoodie and a crew neck. If you want one or the other, let me know because I don't want to get too much merch out of the gates if you guys don't want the specific product. Anyways. Once again, please message me. I'm open to so many ideas for everything. But other than that, I hope you have the best day. I hope you like this episode. I hope you feel inspired for the fall. You feel like you're going to level up into that best version of yourself. You deserve to. Seriously, we all deserve to be our best selves. And just know that if this season of life feels really tough and you don't feel like your best self, give yourself some grace, lots of love. But seriously, don't hang out for too long in the pity party area of life. Do things every day, one or two things that you know will boost your mood. And I promise day by day, you will get there. It takes time. It's not always easy. It's not always an overnight fix to get out of a funk, but you will get out of it and you are strong and you are so deserving of your best self. Okay, my queens, I love you so, so much. You guys are truly the best. And if you love the episode, leave a review. It helps the show so much. It helps us reach more people all around the world. And also, if you want to tag me in your stories on Instagram, I will do my best to repost them. And please message me. I'm always here. And yeah, that is it. I will see you next Wednesday. Have the best day and stay sweaty and healthy but human and keep shining and believing in yourself. All right, I love you and I'll see you soon.
Bye